Hello there. And in this video, we're going to lay down a basic description and development of what the confidence interval for the population mean looks like, and also how to uh, interpret just a basic couple of things about what it will tell us. Before we do that, let's just recall a couple conclusions of the previous videos, just to make sure we're up to par on things. So firstly, recall that the expected value for the random variable x bar is equal to the mean of the distribution. We've proved in this in a previous video. Uh, so since that is the case, then that means x bar is an unbiased estimator for the mean of the population. Some people refer to it as an unbiased point estimator for the mean of the population. Secondly, for some sample s, and let us assume s is a uh, simple, random, independent uh, sample from the population p, let us assume that this sample has some sample mean uh, x bar. So there's going to be two types of errors that are going to be associated to this x bar. Uh, the first error that we are already familiar with is the standard error of the estimate. So recall that the standard error of the estimate for the sample mean is equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of m. And this is only if the central limit theorem holds, uh, that this equation holds, uh, but nonetheless there's going to be a standard error of the estimate that's going to be associated to the distribution. And the second is the error associated to your confidence in your sample of being well representative of p. And this is going to tie into whether you think the sample size is large or not, uh, whether you think it's random, whether you think it's simple, whether you think it's not random or simple, and so on. Uh, so let us, you know, briefly review what we mean by confidence. Uh, so pretty much 100% confidence corresponds to you saying that you're 100% confident that mu is somewhere between minus infinity to infinity. Uh, that your population mean is somewhere in here. Uh, and of course you would be 0% confident uh, that your mean is equal to your x bar. Now this does not mean that it is impossible for your mean to be equal to the population mean, but it's highly unlikely. Uh, so therefore we call that a zero confidence interval, uh, which we'll eventually talk about in a minute. Um, but let's not uh, dive too much into that in this video, um, but at least be aware that there's two types of errors that's going to be associated to this. Uh, so let's start to build up what we will call a confidence interval. All right, so given some level of confidence, C, which of course is some number between zero and one, uh, typically we choose a confidence level that's somewhere up in the 90s, uh, possibly even the 80s, but usually it's gonna be up in the 90s or upper 90s. Uh, so this corresponds, which corresponds, to some level of statistical significance alpha, which is equal to one minus C, which we've talked about in the previous uh, video. One can claim from this that for some z, and I'm going to notate it as z of alpha over 2. So this is going to be a z-score, but it's not going to be a z-score for a value. It's going to be a z-score associated to a particular probability. And when I show the picture, you'll probably understand what I mean. Um, so there is some z alpha over 2 value such that the following equation holds, namely the probability that some randomly selected value of z is in between minus z alpha over two and z alpha over two, and there's always gonna be some value z that will allow this to be equal to this number c. So keep in mind, so given some level of confidence c, so this number is typically chosen uh, by either you or maybe your company will choose alpha, so that will determine this value of c. So this confidence level is chosen by you. So since this area is chosen, and let us assume that this value z is normally distributed, uh, so that means this is gonna be normally distributed with mean zero and standard deviation one. 
So there is always some number c such that these values minus z over 2 and z alpha over 2 that corresponds to this value of c. Now why do we call it alpha over 2? Well if that is c then that means this area plus this area is going to be alpha and since this distribution is symmetric around 0 that means this area here is going to be alpha over 2 and this value here corresponds to alpha over 2. So that's why we pretty much call it z alpha over 2 because that corresponds to the alpha over 2 percentile, I guess you could call it. Um, but this will change just a tad bit later, um, but that's pretty much the reason why we're going to use this notation. All right, so if I give you a value c, then you should be able to find what this z value, uh, which we're going to call a critical value. So this is what I'm going to call a critical value. is equal to. Now it's not necessarily a z-score because usually when we say z-score, so zx usually is a z-score, that corresponds to some particular value x. Uh, but a critical value is going to correspond to some uh, percentile alpha over 2 in this uh, two-sided case. Alright, so with that basic premise, uh, so just let us review. So we're just going to choose some uh, confidence level C, which corresponds to some level alpha. So that means we can claim that there exists some Z alpha over 2 that corresponds to this picture. And we can find that using the methods previously described. Alright, so from this, recall that the value X minus mu over sigma and the square root of n times x bar minus mu over sigma have distributions z which are standardly normally distributed. So I'm going to choose z to be equal to the square root of n times x bar minus mu divided by sigma. Uh, because either one of these is going to be associated, but I'm going to choose this one. So I'm going to pretty much ignore this one, and later you'll see why I want to choose this value. Alright, so if that is true, I'm going to go back to this previous statement that I have. Uh, so that means for some given value c, so for some given c, there exists z alpha over 2, such that, such that, this probability value, the probability that minus z alpha over 2 is less than or equal to z, but I've chosen this value to be z, is equal to this value c. So there always exists this value z alpha over 2 that corresponds to this probability. So let's do some algebra on this expression. So if this is true, then that means there exists some z alpha over 2 values such that the probability, I'm going to multiply both sides by sigma and divide by the square root of m. So that's going to give us minus z alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of m is less than or equal to x bar minus mu is less than or equal to z sub alpha over 2 times sigma divided by the square root of n and this is still going to be equal to c. So then I'm going to subtract x bar from both sides. So that means the probability of minus x bar minus z alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of n is less than or equal to minus mu is less than or equal to minus x bar plus z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of n, and that's going to be equal to c. And then I'm going to multiply all these sides by negative 1, uh, so I can get just mu on the inside. So when I do that, that's going to reverse my inequalities. So that's going to give us probability. So this is going to turn to a positive. So x bar plus z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of m is greater than or equal to mu is greater than or equal to x bar minus 
z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of m, and that's going to be equal to c. But this is not usually the traditional way of writing inequalities, uh, so we're going to reverse this expression and write it instead as x bar minus z over alpha over the square root of n, I mean sigma over the square root of n, is less than or equal to mu, is less than or equal to x bar plus z sub alpha over 2 times sigma divided by the square root of m is equal to c. So this is an important statement. So what do we have here? So given some value of confidence, c, there exists some z alpha over 2 value such that the probability that mu lies in between these two numbers is equal to that level of confidence. And this is what we call a confidence interval. And this value here that you see repeated is what we call the marginal error. And I'm going to denote this as epsilon. So if I define that as epsilon, then that means this expression can be condensed as x bar minus epsilon is less than or equal to mu, is less than or equal to x bar plus epsilon, and that's going to be equal to c. So this is a more condensed statement of the following form. So usually some people will also rewrite this as the confidence interval for mu. So the confidence interval for mu in this case is going to be equal to x bar minus epsilon, x bar plus epsilon. So this is the magical relationship. This is what we call the confidence interval for mu. And this is the C percent confidence interval for mu because that is what uniquely defines this expression. Where this expression, epsilon, the marginal error, is equal to z alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of m. And also recall that this has a special name that is the standard error of the estimate. So that's z sub alpha over 2 times the standard error of the estimate for x bar. So you may see it rewritten as either one of these cases, but they correspond to the same exact thing. So pretty much what do we have here? So if I have a particular value of confidence C, so I'm going to pretty much, you know, review what we've done here. So step one, we're going to choose a value of confidence. A lot of people choose 95% uh, confidence. So this value of confidence corresponds to some area. So this area here is going to be equal to 0 0.95. So if that is 0 0.95, then that means this area here and this area here, alpha, is going to add up to 0 0.05, which means alpha over 2 is going to be 0 0.025. So that means z sub alpha over 2 and minus z sub alpha over 2 is going to correspond to an area above and below these values of 0 0.025. And you can find that, that these z scores that is the integral from minus z alpha over 2 to z alpha over 2 under the standard normal distribution with respect to z. In order for that to be equal to 0 0.95, this z alpha over 2 value is going to be equal to 1.96. So there exists this z score value that makes this confidence interval true. So if that is the case, and that means there exists, so this will be usually step value 2, find the critical value, find critical value. So once we find the critical value, then we can find our marginal error. So E is going to be Z alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of N. So here we need the standard deviation of the population, and we need the sample size, and that will give us the confidence interval for the population mean x bar minus epsilon x bar plus epsilon. Um, that's just a theoretical overview, uh, but in the next video we're going to do a couple examples associated with confidence intervals uh, to sort of further explain what's going on here.